Hello, I'm David Green, and welcome to a conversation with Dr. Joy Jordan Lake, the author of the novel Blue Hole Back Home, selected this year as the common reader at Amarillo College. We're in the studio of Panhandle PBS, joined by a group of students who've spent time this semester studying the novel. It explores the tensions and violence that erupt when a family from Sri Lanka moves into a small, all-white Appalachian town. Please join us for the next few minutes as we talk with Dr. Joy Jordan Lake about her life and her work. Joy Jordan Lake, welcome and thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having me, David. You have had quite a diverse career in life. You're a professor at Belmont University in Nashville, taught writing and literature at Tufts University and Baylor University. You've served as a chaplain at Harvard University. You've started a food pantry and served on the staff of a multi-ethnic church. Now, I believe all good stories have a common theme, and I'm interested in this. With all that you've done, what consistent theme would you say runs through your life? Oh, tough question. <laughs> I sound so ADD when you read it out, and, and it, it sounds better on paper, too, right, than the reality. Um, consistent theme stories, love stories, um, you know, growing up in the South, I guess that's... Uh, uh, you know, those sort of trying to, the stories to, to, to make people laugh, to make people cry, to try to explain things. Um, and even doing my doctoral work that, that kept me going on those, you know, late nights of trying to crank out a dissertation. Um, the stories um, behind what I was researching kept me going. And 19th century literature has been one of your loves, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, especially the feminine authors. You've written three nonfiction books right. and one of the questions I have for you is uh, what concepts from your nonfiction work has gone into Blue Hole Back Home? Well I guess um, things like trying to look at the the sort of forgotten stories or the stories that really haven't been told. Um, maybe that's a, a common theme there now that you ask. Um, my work and my dissertation was on the the novels responding to Uncle, Uncle Tom's Cabin, which I didn't even know existed until right, I stumbled right. across them and um, and looking at a lot of slave narratives and so I guess I've always been fascinated in, in sort of historical events that nobody talks about that have kind of gotten swept under the rug or um, authors that have been forgotten about or stories that that are captivating that need to be retold. Any focus on that in your in your teaching? I do. I'm just um, I'm just part time with Belmont, which is perfect because it allows time for writing. But but I do. I get to right now. I'm teaching a Southern literature class, which I love. Very smart students. It's an honors class, and um, they just you know I learn so much from them and and reading these great works and just to talk about stories and how they change us and challenge us and and maybe that's where it ties into. Um, to my work running a closed closet food pantry. I was always, I always felt privileged to get to hear people's stories of, um, you know, when they came in, of why they were there. And With your diverse experiences, and I heard you say this last night at a talk you gave here, uh, you mentioned the phrase listening to life, and I thought that was really significant, and I'm interested to know what that means. How, can you tell us how that uh, impacts your writing? Well, it's, it's, um, you know, so so many of us, we can just plow, and I'm the worst at this, just careen through a day and just have your to-do list and drive people places they need to be. But um, like when I was running the, the closed closet food pantry along with a team of wonderful people, um, everybody's story is different for, for why they would need to slip into a church for help. And, and just these beautiful and tragic and complicated stories of, um, you know, moving from Haiti and I've got six kids and not a single one of them has a pair of mittens and it's January in Boston wow. and you know just yeah. these beautiful stories and um, and I, I guess that's um, that's changed me a lot um, to to make me listen better to the people around me not make assumptions mm -hmm. um, because the assumptions are almost never right, right. Um, about who someone else is and and just listen to my own life better about um, who I am and maybe ways that <clears throat> how I'm living isn't matching with how I want to live and those sort of challenges. But I, I, I just think that's important to, um, to pay attention to, 
to listen to our lives and the lives around us.